Welcome to the Russell Hant Show. I have a very special guest, Michael Green, in the house tonight. Uh, the reason I wanted to bring Michael on is because I wanted to talk to him directly about a little situation I see going on. First, I want to say that I am late to the party here, and uh, I know you don't want to talk about this type of stuff any longer. I understand that, and I appreciate you coming on my show to discuss uh, this situation and uh, to get, I wanted to personally, I've been following it on both sides and I wanted to personally get involved uh, or know exactly what's going on because it's interesting to me. It is interesting. And I right. think a lot of people out there think it's interesting because it's not, it's like a YouTube family, even though you're the YouTube part of it. Uh, it's like a, a family and people uh, interested in drama, especially what's going on now with the, with all this stuff that uh, that we're quarantined and we can't get out and do things, I think it keeps people interested. Even though on your side of uh, the aisle, it's almost a tragic story. But before I get right. into that, I want to talk about uh, your dad and your grandpa. He is the he is legendary to YouTube. To me, he is the OG of YouTube. Yeah, man. We you know we we started doing it in two thousand seven and. Just, just kept going. It was a wild ride, man. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, I because I remember before I even played Survivor. You that don't know who I am, that's crazy if you don't. But that that means you don't watch the show Survivor on CBS. I was on that show three times. Uh, a lot of people on here, I'm sure, are going to be like, "Who is this guy?" Uh, but, so yeah, I remember watching him when I was before I even played Survivor, it's like almost before YouTube was really YouTube. Right. Yeah. Did y'all yeah. know that that was going to happen? Did y'all know it was going to explode like it did? No. Here's the thing. Like I always, I always just wanted to do something with, with my time and life where I just didn't have to get a regular job. <laughs> you know, I worked right. them, you know, I worked at Wendy's and I worked at Walmart and Kohl's and I just hated it. I, I wanted more and we're in this trailer park and, what else can we do but you right. know film our lives and show it to people and for some reason it took off and it, it started off as a bunch of one off videos and and nobody expected it to be what it became <laughs> you know yeah. i i thought once we hit like 25,000 subs we were like wow like th this is as good right. as it gets but then all of a sudden we get a million and 2 million and wow. it, it was amazing you know and and for the rest of his life he got to feel like a star. And that's something I always appreciated because before we were just completely nobody. And then all of a sudden overnight, people are asking for his picture and, and autographs. Right. And, and I was always appreciative of that to my fan base that they made him feel special in his last yeah. time. So I'll always love him for that. Did you think that when I, it was all going down, it was super aggressive. Did you think that that would be a backlash? Like, well, you're like, maybe this, maybe too much for YouTube at that point in time? <laughs> I don't know about YouTube, but it was definitely too much for like, like the state because grandpa got custody of his grandchildren and we were utilizing them in the videos and we, we shouldn't right. have done that. We were like, Oh, let's just do whatever we want. And of course we tell them, Hey, we're going to do this. And you know, grandpa's gonna, you know, yell, but they didn't like that. <laughs> so we didn't expect all that to happen, but we managed to get a handle on everything and really like, control it and find, find yeah. a nice balance. Like there was a time I got a, like arrested by the FBI. Right? Like, wow. I did a lot of like dumb stuff in the beginning of YouTube and I wouldn't do now, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of mistakes. I, I feel like your whole thing's frozen on my end. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Go ahead. So yeah. Uh, to me, when I think of old school OG videos, I think of Angry Grandpa. You know, I think that he started the whole thing, in my opinion. Because I remember even in uh, 2011 or so, uh, A&E called me to do a show. And then they were like, let's do some things on YouTube, too. And I declined it. I, I, it to me, it wasn't where I wanted to go. I didn't think it was a big deal like i do these days like youtube is now and i wish i wouldn't have done that because it's it, it back when you did it 
how did you know that YouTube was going to just turn out the way it did it, 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 it the way it is now? Well, see, here's the interesting thing. What you just said, we had the opposite story. So we had True TV. They came to us for a reality show in 2011, and they told us that we would have to give up the YouTube channel to do this reality show. Oh, wow. And I was talking to dad. Oh, no way, man. And there was no way that was happening. You know, part of me was like- You did the right thing. <laughs> yeah, like, like there, there was money- but we could have made more long term on YouTube and yeah. we just gave up a channel with at the time. I think we had 400,000 subs and that was that was amazing to us at the time. And we weren't giving that up for some reality show that could be canceled season one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'd say you did the right thing there because you, it's not near because I, I work with A&E. It's not near what you can profit on something like YouTube, especially when you're blowing up like you guys did. Right. So. We'll go ahead and get into it. And like I said, I know that you really don't want to talk about it that much. I know that it's been a thorn in your side for years <laughs> in your life right now. But I, I thought it was really interesting. You did a part one or two vi type videos of, and I thought this guy, I didn't know who this guy was at first. I thought he was like a cousin or a friend of the family. Are you I didn't about realize that it was Bridge. Yes, oh. I didn't realize Bridge was actually because. In my view, when I seen things, it couldn't have been a, it, the way he was acting towards Bridget, it couldn't have been anything other than a cousin or something. It's ridiculous, right? <laughs> right? Like, I, and right. I'm, so I was, I'm, not, I'm not avoiding you. I'm tweeting out the link. <laughs> yeah. okay, oh, okay. okay. I was tweeting out the yeah, link. So I was like, there's no way that this is Bridget's dad. And this isn't scripted. This stuff is not scripted. This is all real. A hundred percent real, man. Like, it, the, and for anybody that watches my videos and is following this right now, I promised I wouldn't talk about this, but Russell wants to talk about it. So that's what we're going to do. So, man, I hated this dude for a couple of years now because he used to use Bridget as a personal piggy bank. Like, he didn't want to get a job. And anytime Bridget would say, hey, why don't you apply here or apply here or apply here or apply here? He would always say, oh, I can't because I got sores on my arm. Oh, I can't because they test for sleep apnea. Oh, I can't because of this or because of that. There yeah. was always an excuse why he couldn't get a job. And it was only just an excuse to ask Bridget for the money. Like, hey, I need $500. Yeah. And it just this is what I think. too much. And when you, yeah, when you put together a compulsive liar type personality and money slash YouTube fame. When you put all that together, you create a monster. You really do. <laughs> Don't I know it? <laughs> Don't I know it, man? That's so, like and you know, I don't know the guy personally, all I'm doing and, and I'm not just watching your stuff. I actually watch his too. Right. And, and when I watch it, it's almost, it's not, it's almost like I'm watching a Saturday night live skit. Right. You it's, can't believe it's real. Some of the things, right. I can't believe what he's saying or what he actually thinks that other people think, uh, regular people think that they're buying this. Like, who buys that this guy walks in a hospital? I told, I have a, I have a, a young lady that works, that works with me and she does different things on here, uh, you know, the shirts and stuff like that. And I, and I told her she did not following the story. And I, I started telling her the story and I was like, okay, they have this guy that walks in a hospital and to see his grandchild, but nobody <laughs> knows he's there because he says he's wearing scrubs and she just, she so laugh. It's laughable. Right. It really is. It's honestly like that one. I like when I was making the first video, I didn't even know he said that. Like I was gathering clips and I said, did he just, did he just say he snuck into the hospital wearing scrubs and walked right by me? Like, like you're not Agent Forty Seven, okay? This is not Hitman. Did, was he, did he have a? Did he have the whole mask on? I'm I mean, guessing. Did he have the whole gear on. The whole. He, he must have been prepped for surgery, dude. <laughs> you know, like I don't know what why he thought anybody would believe this stuff, but like when you say that many lies, it's amazing that anybody would believe you anymore, right? Like. Once you say one lie, they're like, okay, you're a liar. You know, that there's no way. But this dude just categorically lies about everything. Yeah. And I, look, I understand when the hospital thing, not going to see his grandchild, I don't, 
I don't get that. I can I can get it on some points because I even me and my daughter got in a got in an argument right before she had her baby due to the father's uh, the father of the baby right. and and the things that we. I'm not going to get into much of that, but what I'm trying to say is, uh, yeah, sometimes you have arguments and you don't want to be there because of this or that. But why would you lie about? It? Like, what? is the cause because he wants to seem like a good dad because he doesn't seem like a good dad when he's calling his own daughter names. Right. So where, at what point is he, right. At what point is he trying to look like a good dad when, her, you know, his daughter was supporting him at one point in time? Yeah. I don't it, think that that makes any sense. Yeah, I don't know the purpose to just like make. I, I I've never really understood lying like that, unless you're on the game like Survivor. <laughs> like, I don't get why. Like, what's the in life? What's the purpose yeah. of lying about stuff? Like, it's gonna right. come out. You know what I mean? Especially when you're lying about stuff that's like documented on your own YouTube channel. <laughs> like, when you deny saying stuff that you have clearly said, that that's when it becomes like a mental problem. And I think the guy needs help or something. Well, there's things that he does that shows that he needs help. When right. he says that he's at, when he says that he's at the, uh, when your when your dad was passing, he says he was there, and he said you didn't get there till two, when obviously the death certificate says four fifteen. Uh, when he has blatant lies like that, like, and why would he even say that? Does, is he trying to seem like a good friend at that point? Like he's trying to seem like a good dad, trying to seem like a good friend. Like there's things that happen in life that we don't ha always have to be there. I mean, it's you could he could have easily said, "Right, I wish that I was. I wish I could have been there, but I wasn't." It's yeah, I, just I, as I don't know. I gave him an out. I told him, "Hey, listen, I don't care that you were fishing, and, and you know you you have a life. You know, I understand. Yeah. You know, you don't have to be by my dad's side the entire time, but don't lie and say you were just to say that I'm a bad son." Anybody that watches the videos knows that I'm not a bad son. I bought him a house. I bought him a car. I started vlogging from the hospital parking lot and uploading using my like satellite, like GPS on the, you know, oh, he was happy. star. Like, yeah, right. I was there with my dad every moment. And then to say that the last day I was like, eh, I don't want to be there for what reason? Like, I, I don't right. know the reason why you would say that unless it's just to tell people I was there when he died. Like, I, I don't get that. You know, it's, it's very weird. Yeah, it, a lot of things he does is very weird. It, even like the like little things, like uh, the dildo on his table, and then he shows a picture of it with on. He shows a picture of his table with nothing on there. It's like, oh, you see, it's not there. <laughs> you like, are. I can't watching. remove it. <laughs> you watched right. everything. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. This guy put like sent somebody a picture of his table with a dildo on it, and I don't know why. Like, look, if you want to use dildos, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, hey, whatever, whatever floats your boat. That's fine to have dildos. Bridget has dildos, okay? <laughs> but you know, right? you don't got to lie about it. You don't got to show a table that's been cleaned off to prove that it wasn't yours. <laughs> you know, I don't, yeah. I don't get it, man. It's odd. A picture <laughs> of the table. Oh no, it's not there. Look, I just took a picture of it. It's not there. No, I didn't move it or nothing. Yeah, I'm an honest guy. Where's the dildo? It's clearly not mine, but you moved it. <laughs> he took a newspaper off the table and moved the dildo, and that proved it wasn't his. <laughs> like, Do you think that he, in his mind, does he lie to himself? Does he believe his lies? Because that's a disease. Some people believe what they say. I think absolutely he believes his lies, dude. <laughs> like I've, I've always told Bridget, like Bridget's like, he's lying and he knows it. Like, I don't think he knows it, to be honest. I honestly think he believes the stuff he's saying. And it's like, that is a disease. Like when you say something enough, your own head believes it. That's a problem. Like you have to know the difference between reality and perception. Right. And, and, and when he, he says that uh, he was filming or he was uh, timing the altercation that y'all had. It was right. in his pocket. His phone was in his like. <laughs> what he says is laughable. Like really, right. it really is. He tells people that the phone wasn't uh, on, wasn't in his pocket. It was on the kitchen table recording. But in the video, he pulls his phone out and starts dialing on it. <laughs> like it, and not to mention the entire video, there isn't a cut. Like. The, the second he answers the door to the second we leave, there's not a cut one time in that video. 
and he tried to say that there was. I'm I'm saying if right. you can find one, I'll suck my own. I won't. I don't know if you can cuss on this, but I will do unspeakable things to myself yep. and post it online. <laughs> yeah. So he he uh, it's to me, man. I think it's the like I said before when you have a compulsive liar, and then you have uh, a famous daughter that's making money off of YouTube, then he's trying to get involved uh, with his channel. You can clearly see what he's doing. He, he will never, and mark my word, you will never hear him talk on his channel without using your name. Right. Or name. right. And, and, you know, for the record, we don't see ourselves as like, you know, popular or famous or anything like that. We're, we, you know, we were trailer trash that got lucky and to, making a little bit of money. Yeah. But for some of these people that didn't have to work as hard as we did to get what we have, they think that it's more important than it is. Right. Like he thinks he, he thinks he is a star. Like he gets, you know, a few hundred people watching his live stream and he thinks he's a star all of a sudden. You really? Know? And you're not though, dude, like we're YouTubers. <laughs> you can't forget that. You know, we've, we've never been on any kind of a national scale. You know, we haven't been on a show like yeah. survivor. We haven't like been to, Hollywood parties and the premieres we're nobody. Okay. Don't like confuse it, but he confuses it and he thinks he's like really special. And when he sits there and I hate people like this, I, before I even met him or known about this, I hate people that sit there and shame other people when they don't look in the mirror themselves. Right. It's like, what? like if you're going to shame someone, you should never shame anyone in the first place. But People like that are the worst type of people. Like you, you don't. This guy's calling me fat, and he looks like like Bill Murray. Bill Murray on Zombie Land. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like there's something going on when you can do that. Like, like I don't make fun of the way people look because I look fucked up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna make yeah. fun of another person's appearance like this guy. It, it's odd, and he's like 60. Like, who does this at that age? Yeah. So maybe he just needs medication, man. Maybe it's like a mental breakdown in his head. Because when I played Survivor, the, the first three times I played, I was this guy called King Russell. I was in control of everything. When I got off the show, I let all that get the best of me. I, I stayed that character for a little while until I realized that I was screwing up everything, my family, everything. So I stepped back from it. And then I took a look in the mirror and was like, you know what? I can't do this no more. And then I, it made me a better person. To be that person. You know, me and Bridget were really depressed that you didn't do another season of that house flipping show. Man, <laughs> I can't believe we didn't get picked up. We didn't get we picked up. We loved it. We loved that show. Yeah. Dude. Like, it inspired me. Like, before dad passed away, I was pitching a house flipping show myself for dad before, but unfortunately passed away. It was the, what it was going to mm -hmm. be was grandpa buys one house, takes the entire season to fix the entire thing up. And of course he's grandpa. It was going to be called flipping out with angry grandpa. And oh, that would have been great. I was pitching yeah. it, and and me and Bridget were watching your show as like serious inspiration because it was a it was good. Like it, you know, we, yeah, we it was a good it, show, man. It was it was nothing bad about that show. We couldn't believe it. Well, it was all mm -hmm. politics, so we didn't get picked up. But I'm not gonna get into that. But that's exactly what it was. But anyway, so yeah, he's uh, it shocked me when I found out that that was Bridget's dad. I was like, wait, yeah. What? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I have my first daughter now, and when she was born, I got it. Like, everybody says that when you get your first child, your world changes when you're looking at them and stuff, and I never really understood it until I had Mia. And I'm holding her, and I couldn't believe you could love somebody as much as you love your child. I don't think he got that moment, right? Because he wasn't there when no. Bridget was born. He went home. Uh, a sad true story is this dude dropped Cindy, Bridget's mom, off at the hospital, and he went home to sleep. And Bridget was born, and he came the next day to visit her. <laughs> so, wow, I, he was robbed. I wouldn't say. I mean, you're not robbed if you choose to go to sleep, but he robbed himself of that first yeah, like, that moment. moment. And I that has to have something to do with it, right? Like, I can't imagine a yeah. father doing this. Like, I, I it, my yeah. mind can't pick up on it. Yeah, when I had my twins, my first. My uh, first two I had twins right off the bat. When wow. they, when they, when they, when the doctor showed them to me, I, my knees buckled. It was like I, 
couldn't, you know, it was weird. When I heard their voice for the first time, that's what it did. That's when it hit me. When I heard them crying for the first time, right. it was like, it was real, you know, but I get it. And, and that, that may be something, you may be onto something because he's so into saying that he was actually there. Oh, Who still- believes that he's there? Do you? If I did a if I did a poll, or let's say you did a poll with two million people on the on your channel, and then he did it, or let's say the poll was fair, and uh, millions of people voted, and do you honestly think that twenty percent of the, anybody would say that yes, he was there in Scrubs? <laughs> I feel like if twenty percent said it, it would just be people like trying to mess with me and mess with the poll. Right. Because, right. Yeah. Nobody that is all here would believe that he was able to sneak. First of all, it's illegal. Isn't it like against the law to impersonate like a doctor or something? Yeah, in a you, hospital? I don't think he is. And, and he was all fooled up like that. Where did Number one, where did he get him? Uh, where did he change at? Like, did he walk out <laughs> in the hospital like that? Like, I have tons of questions about the scrubs. Right. Did he stop at Party City on the way to the hospital and <laughs> got some scrubs and a gown? Like, I don't know what, what he was trying to fool there. Not to mention all that. The, the maternity floor was secured. Like there are security guards outside. When you show up to the door, they have to ask your ID and then they like put in your ID and see if you're allowed access by the family. And then they let you in if you know the passcode. Yeah. yeah. Obviously he had none of that. <laughs> you know, Dude, he would be arrested. Right. On the so, he's, spot. so he's trying to say that he got through security by saying, I'm a doctor. And they, Oh, come on in, sir. And they let it like, yeah, right. That, that didn't happen folks. And, there's no way. I feel like there's less than a zero percent chance. Like less. He has negative people that believe this story, but they'll just yes, believe it to right. hate me. <laughs> like th- there's right. no way somebody believes it. There's no way. They can't. <laughs> and it, and and don't. Wouldn't you know? He said he walked right by you. Let's say. Let's just say it's real. Let's just say okay. He got in there with scrubs. Like you wouldn't recognize him. Right. You wouldn't recognize his walk. His his build. His like. Like, that's a big doctor. I mean, he, the thing is, his first lie was, I saw her through glass. That's good enough for me. Because I guess he saw a couple of TV shows from the 80s where they had babies lined up behind, you know, the right. gawking glass. But they don't do that anymore. Like, yeah, they right. have the nursery and the glass is there. But most people just choose to have their babies in the room like we did. So we right. didn't leave the room the entire time we were at the hospital. I slept on the pullout couch. Bridget slept obviously in the hospital bed and we stayed there the whole time. So there was no moment where we passed him in the hallway unless he was there when we gave birth or she, he was there for the first bath, which was like one in the morning. So so like, I don't think so, man, (laughs) you know, it didn't happen, bro. When did he, when did he actually tell you and what was your reaction? Your very first reaction when you found out that he said that he was there. Uh, my fir- the first time I heard it, somebody texted it to me because I don't watch his stuff. I, you know, the only time I saw any of his clips was when I was preparing the first, you know, video that I was putting out. I, I must have watched him for two weeks, and like I'm stupider having watched it. Right, that's when I really heard it. When I was editing the video, I was like, Bridget, did you hear this? He said he snuck in the hospital and dressed like a doctor. <laughs> like, like it's. I was I was happy that he said it, dude, because I'm like proof. <laughs> you know, he, how could somebody be this stupid to say this stuff? And, and he believed yeah. it. Like on the phone call, he said it. And had I known he said he snuck in the hospital, I would have brought it out when I called him. But at the time I did the phone call, I hadn't seen any of the clips. I wish I had. Like it's it's asinine. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing is for real. I mean, it did. Did the anger grandpa was he a friend of his? I mean, listen, they were they were friends and they weren't friends, right? Like dad had a love-hate relationship with him. The the problem that he had with Doug is Doug was a know-it-all. And there was a couple of times we would put it on video as a joke, but the reality is it came from a real place. Anything that you would say, Doug had a response and you're doing it wrong and this is the way you do it. I had to get on his ass one time because I was filming a video. We did, I think it was uh, a cell phone. Dad smashed it with a hammer and the s- started smoking and spinning. And I'm watching this video. I'm like, oh, yes, viral video. And Doug is by the door. Hey, pay attention to me. Listen, get out the house. It's smoking. Can't breathe that in. And I'm like trying to ignore him filming this jet. And 
hey, Michael, you listening to me? And I turned to him. I said, shut the fuck up, Doug. I'm filming this video. And so <laughs> when I'm editing this video, I had to remove the audio of him telling me. If people go back and watch it and really listen, you'll hear the audio go blank. And I put fake audio under it because he decided to talk during the viral part of the video. I'm like, I can't repeat. Right. I can't recreate a song right. spinning and on fire, right? Like, get out of here, bro. And, of course, he went out in the front yard and started pouting. Mm, I'll never help again. I'm like, you ruined my video, bro. Like, I was so mad that day, dude. It was ridiculous. Yeah. It's just, it blows my mind. It, there's definitely a reality TV show here. I wouldn't recommend <laughs> you do it. <laughs> right. I, know, I wouldn't want to do it because... I don't want to financially help this guy, right? <laughs> like, like getting him right, on reality right. TV based on marriage that we brought to the table, right? Like, I, I'm I'm done with this guy. Like, I I said what I said, and I'm doing it now. But this this is it. Like, I hate him, man. Like, he he's yeah. The stuff he said about me and my daughter and my girlfriend and my father, I forget him. You know. Yeah, yeah, and then I heard some things he said about his so-called friend. Right, and when he pauses, when I'm a, I'm sure he's gonna watch this, and when he when when he pauses when someone asks him if Angry Grandpa is a legend, that's disrespectful by itself because right. one uh, one le one legend to another, Angry Grandpa is one hundred percent. Okay, I'm back. There we go. So, like I said, one legend to another, Angry and Paws is the original OG. He is yeah. more than a legend. He began it. Yes. He began it. He is the face of uh, YouTube, in my opinion. Like, he, I think you guys are, are something else. And, you know, you say you got lucky, but I don't know about that because I'm in the YouTube thing right now, and it's not luck, dude. There's a lot of work involved in this, and you you know you have to do all kind of stuff, and it takes, and then you have to be patient, and you have to keep doing it, and you know you know everything has to be right. So I don't call it luck. I, I call it dedication and hard work. A lot of people don't know how hard it actually is until they actually start trying to build a channel. It is hard, <laughs> like. Imagine yeah. like not only creating a channel, but keeping it relevant for like a long time. Like we started in 2007 and 2020, we're still going. And like, you can't do that unless you have like some amazing fans. You have to one, appreciate the fans and two, like make them happy, which I try to do as often as I can. Sometimes I don't, I clickbait, you know, I like, but you know, sometimes you have to clickbait. You know, that's the problem with YouTube. Yeah, clickbait's part of the clickbait's actually part of the business, and uh, people they they don't want to click on it unless it's something to click on, and it, that right. is the business. Yeah, exactly, it is what it is when it comes to that. It's like when the news says if it bleeds, it leads, right? Like you have to have something that they want to see, otherwise they're not going to see it. You know, so sometimes you yeah. got to do entertaining stuff and clickbait. It. It's it's unfortunate. I wish yeah. it wasn't like that. Yeah. Well, I know you, you're not blood with him. So let's talk about Bridget for a little while. How is she handling this? How did that, that has to affect her. It's her, her dad. Yeah. You know, for the first, like, I'd say eight months, usually during the pregnancy, she, you know, her hormones were out of control and the whole pregnancy, he's telling people she's not pregnant and treating her like crap. She was very sad. You know, sometimes she would cry. And, and here's the thing here, you know, I don't know if she wants to be saying this. Sometimes she would cry because her dad was so stupid. She was, she was sad because he didn't have 
the mental capacity that a normal person would. And that makes her sad that he's stupid and doesn't understand. And it just, I don't think it, you know, it got to a point when she had the baby where she was just done with him. Like she understood what he was saying to her was horrible. And he, and he was a piece of crap for it. And she sort of wrote him off then, but she really wanted that one more chance, which is why we showed up to his house. And it, boy, did he spectacularly blow that. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So I think that, a lot of what he does is due to YouTube. I think what he does is due to followers and views. I don't think he, I don't think that he sits there and says he hates his daughter. I think he, every, it's just really hard for me to think that a father could hate their daughter. Right. I think that, I think it's all directed around YouTube and fame, the whole entire thing. So yeah, it does that to you. I mean, it, it can get the best of you, especially when all of a sudden you start getting 30,000 people watching your lives or 10,000 watching your lives as you talking about you or Bridget. Right. You know, so if you two would have never happened, do you think that her and uh, they would have a good, a, an average relationship? Uh, not really. Like, uh, I didn't even know. Like you know, she has a stepfather named Jimmy. I didn't know that wasn't her dad until we were dating for two years. I thought that was her dad. And then I met her real dad. And I was like, who, who is this guy? So that's my dad. I'm like, Oh, uh, you would think you would introduce your real dad after, you know, oh, before yeah. two years. Right. And, and I, yeah. you know, it, it didn't take long to learn why, you know, his, you know, a lot of his side of the family didn't like Bridget. A lot of them would say Doug wasn't the dad you know, stop paying child support for a long time. Just really miss, really didn't treat her like a daughter from the beginning. If, you know, the day he found out, the day he found out she started smoking, he like told her he wanted access to her email accounts and, you know, MySpace accounts and <laughs> AOL. And he just, he was yeah. one of those kind of parents that was just crappy, you know, J just a bad parent in general, you know, D just the stuff that she's told me, she's always had a bad relationship with him. I mean, it, it's kind of sad because the daughter and the dad, that's usually a special. You see it. You see it with your own daughter right now. Right. So it's usually a special moment and it's something you want to cherish for the rest of your life. That, and I have to, I don't see it happening, but do you guys see anything positive ever come out like do you see yourself ever getting together and crushing this or not me Is that ever possible? I mean, when you say the stuff that he said about my father. Yeah. And, 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 like, I that, understand that. It's like, it's one of those things where, you know, I'll get into a room with him and I'll talk to him, but he has to agree to let me slap him across his face a couple of times first. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. if, if he agrees to that, I'll sit in a room and talk with him and hear him out. But he has to agree to let me beat the shit out of him first. <laughs> you know, you, you yeah. can't. Do you think y'all ever, <laughs> uh, you think y'all ever, uh, I see it one day happening that y'all throw in blows. I see it happening one day. I mean, listen, the, only, the there was one reason I didn't throw blows in the video because I, you know, I gave him the chance. I was like, look, hit me, dude. Because if he hit me, I was going to beat his ass. Yeah. I can't let, while I'm filming this video, I couldn't let people like, I realized if I hit this dude, people are going to feel sorry for him. And all the progress that I made is just completely gone. Right. Like I show everybody what he said. And if I let my anger get the best of me, I lost all my credibility and I couldn't yeah. allow that to happen. So I had to keep my composure as angry as I was, as much as I wanted to slap the piss out of the dude. I had to, you know, whether we come to blows one day, I, I don't know. You know, if he shows up to my house and he tries to get smart with me and puts his hands on me, maybe, <laughs> you know, but I won't be, yeah. you know, my thing is he's a cop caller. And oh yeah, so I can't. I have to watch myself because he'll he'll try to press charges or sue me or I, I could see it being a money grab. So I just forget him. Yeah, don't you think that that if he would have went about this a different route, like just been a good guy, that he actually could be making money with it? Like if he would have not right. went the route he went, uh, he definitely could have. All these people that like do this after they leave, like what we do, 
I've tried to help them all. I've said, here's how you can do it. And they don't listen. <laughs> you know, they, they think they know everything. You know, the, the biggest weakness you can have is a thinking, you know, everything. I'm still asking people for advice. I, I got a lot of YouTube friends where I'll turn to them. Hey, what if I do this? What if I do that? Cause I don't know everything. I don't pretend to know everything. If you think you know everything, then you're not doing as well as you think. So I try to ask as many questions as I can. He thinks he knows everything and you can't tell him everything. Right. Yeah. So if he would have uh, came with love instead of anger, because what he did was like, okay, it was all about negative aggression with the angry grandpa. He, the videos were, that's how they got so popular. So I'm going to go ahead and do that too. But it's kind of backfiring on him. Right. When he, if he would have went with positive, you know, something positive, and then maybe Bridget, you know, uh, y'all could have did something together instead of this. You could have actually worked together, you know. I, I try. I begged them on multiple occasions before any of this happened to stop. I'm like, listen, stop what you're doing. Pay attention to what you're saying because you're going to say stuff you can't come back from. And he did. And that's what happened. When his mom died, he sent Bridget pictures of her dead body. Like, okay. and he was doing it to ask for money. <laughs> because wow. Bridget's grandma, her, they were on, they, Bridget was on her bank account. She was, it was a joint bank account and she didn't want any of like her family on it because she didn't trust them. So if she passed away, she knew they would clean her bank account out and then nothing would get taken care of and they would just take it all. So she had Bridget on the bank account. And before she passed away, he kept writing Bridget, mom wants you to add me to the bank account. And we knew better. Like, she, if she wanted you on the bank account, she would have added you on the bank account. So we called her while she was alive, and she said it wasn't true. She said, no, I don't want this dude near my money. He's going to take it all. So we didn't do it. And he used – when she passed away, he was like, I need money. And he sent a picture of her body. And we're like, who does this? It's the most monstrous, like, crap that I've ever seen, dude. Like – you know, look, mom's dead. Here's a picture to prove it. Like, yeah, who, no, what it is, it's exactly what I said. It's when you combine a compulsive liar to money and YouTube, you, it's not a positive thing. It doesn't work, guys. And, and everybody that always, I, I heard you talking about, and it made me think, because I have it, my YouTube channel, but it's not near what yours is, but I have a different audience. I have usually a rea reality TV audience, right. but when you have, it would love this story, by the way, if you're a reality TV fan, you need to go to check out kid behind the cameras, uh, part one, part two is it part three, two, yeah. uh, <laughs> Doug videos. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Super entertaining. If you ain't got nothing to do, but it's like, he's, uh, <laughs> not real. The thing that he says, it's like a human does not say that. That just came out of his mouth when he right. called Bridget fat. I'm like, wait, what? It's unbelievable, man. This is this is your daughter, man. But whatever, dude. Some some people are hopeless. <laughs> you know, they don't want to listen. They think they know everything, and in the end, it bites them in the ass. But that that's their fault, man. It is what it is. Yeah. So it's sad. It's a sad story, really. Interesting story, but could, now we have a baby involved, right? Your little girl, and you know it's going to be sad because I don't think it's going to get better. I think it's only going to get worse, right? So as she grows up and starts being able to understand things, that she's going to see the negative side of all this as well, right? And not have a grandfather. That's not good. I mean, maybe later, later on, something can happen where you guys. I mean, luckily you know, she has things. I don't know. You know, luckily she has Bridget's stepfather who like really loves her, man. He, he, he treat, you know, she is that, that is his grandchild, you know? And so luckily she has him and Bridget's mom and my mom. And, you know, luckily she, she does have a nice family unit that loves her and a lot of friends. So hopefully she doesn't miss what she doesn't know because they're monsters, you know? Yeah, when I was watching his side of the story, uh, right when it while it was going down, I also was watching. Uh, he had your brother on there, right? Is, is his name Michael Green as well? No, Charlie. Charlie. Okay, so I wasn't sure. 
I'm sure so, he wishes uh, his name was Michael Green. <laughs> <laughs> so, but he's been through some battles, I, right. I'm assuming. Uh, and he, I see him. I have brothers. I have a grandfather. I have my grandfather passed away. Uh, you know, I have family members. And I can't see, I mean, there's Brandon, you know, Brandon, sometimes Brandon will say negative things. Brandon Hans, he played on Survivor. Right. And there's, there's that. But that comes to, that I cannot, I, I, sat, I sat there and I watched him talk about you and I could not understand how a brother could talk about another brother like that. It's it's the same thing with Doug, man. It's money. It's like it these people, like what happens is if I'm friends with them, oh boy, I am the greatest human alive. I do so much and they love me. The second I'm like, I I, I don't deserve your disrespect and I cut them off, they're like, Oh, I cut you off. <laughs> you know, it's like when you get fired and you go, You can't fire me, I quit. <laughs> right. Well, no, you were fired. Okay. And they, they take right. this like hostile approach because they realize they're cut out. They realize that it's over and they try to hold on to it for as long as they can. And they can't, <laughs> you know, like, but you did this, but you did this. You and your grandpa did this. It's right. like your hard work. Why does other people want your hard work? Like it's what you, you've done. It's what you you're doing. They have an opportunity to go their, their own route. And it seems like he's tried a few times and I've watched some of his stuff. I uh, forgot what it's called, but they go around looking at different, things uh right. so i watch some of his stuff and to me he could be very entertaining to me he could do it if he worked hard at it he could get his own stuff going that that's you know, what but I, I always said that man like like you know he before he did his whole thing he was planning all this stuff with his channels if that's a good idea you should do that you know it was his own yeah. thing it was his own approach but the problem is he can't like find his way out from under my shadow as if I'm trying to cast it on him. Like this dude is to a point where he's posting about me 20, 30 times a day on Facebook. And I, this is the first time yeah. I've mentioned him. And I don't know. Is man, he in the chat? You think he's in the chat? Probably. He's probably like probably somebody pretending to be him. You know, there, there's yeah. like, I don't get but it, man. This is how I do it. This And look, I like, I just said it earlier, but I played I played Survivor. I know that I have to work the Survivor edge, but I want to do stuff like this with reality. Right. Shane Dawson. I want to get uh, a van that goes around and actually does the interviews in the van. So I want right. a different. I want a different type of uh, YouTube channel, and I'm building the way I'm building my YouTube channel is from Survivor. I can understand Char Charlie's his name. I can understand Charlie building his channel off of Angry Grandpa and yourself, Absolutely, yeah. building it, getting a base, and then moving on to, to, to grow it, you know, to get further with it. The problem, yeah, the problem is he feels like, you know, oh, I want to be the only one. Like, like, he can be the only one to make money. And unfortunately, that's been his downfall. You know, you can't just move on with your life. You have to talk about me. And, and eventually, people watch and they're like, okay, this is a little pathetic. After a while... Like I haven't spoken to the dude uh, in two years now, two years, Russell. I haven't talked to this guy in two years and daily. He still talks about me all the time. I'm all would he has say, going on. Would you say you love him? Not at all. Y did you ever? Absolutely. As a brother. There was a, there was a period of time. He was my, he was my best friend. He was one of the, you know, I could call him talk, three, four hours and we would talk and laugh and joke and have a good time. But alcohol is a bitch, Russell. Okay. And it got to the, then it started oh, getting I, to the I point know. where I would call him and 10 minutes into the phone call, I'm like, I'm changing my fucking number. Like I, I don't want to talk to him anymore. And then it got to a period where I was just blocking him and I didn't talk to him for like three years because he was blocked on Facebook. And then I unblocked him. It turns out he's still doing the same cycle of shit and he's getting arrested. Then he, that he needs our help because he can't pay his child support. He's going to go to jail. So I start giving him money, hoping, okay, maybe if I give him money, you know, he'll be a better person. No, that didn't work. It's, it's to a point now where all the stuff that he said and done, I don't love him either. You know, it, he's a person that was in my now, life. What would you point. give him advice? If you was going to give him advice right now, 
like honest, heartwarming advice, what would the advice be for him to help himself? Number one, get sober. You know, he, he you know, and he'll say he's not. He's that could not, change everything, though, man. Absolutely. But if he did, that could change everything because absolutely, I, you know, that's a that's a disease and. Absolutely. You know, I, I kind of feel sorry for the guy because it seems like he would he would do great when it comes to, uh, you know, his YouTube channel. And uh, he's likable. He's, he, has, he seems like he's a likable guy. If you I've, always know said, I've always said, you know, sober Charlie is one of the more creative, you know, funny people that I know. When he's sober, you know, he's a delight to talk to. It's just when he's not sober these demons take over and he hates everybody and anybody that gets in his way. I'm the source of all his problems. I'm the reason he drinks, uh, you know, even though I'm seven years younger than the guy, I'm the reason he drinks. I'm the reason he smoked that first cigarette. I'm the reason he can't pay his child support. I'm the reason he got arrested. All the, like, it's all my fault. And you got to, first of all, whatever baggage you're holding against me, you got to let the go, dude. Like I'm sitting here, not talking about you, raising a child, making money and taking care of our entire family. And you're sitting at your house obsessing about me. You have to get sober. And I've always said, if he gets sober and stayed sober, I would consider talking to him again, you know, cause yeah. I, I don't hate sober, Charlie. I hate drunk. You understand it's a, yeah. You understand it's a disease. Absolutely, man. My dad was, you an understand alcoholic. it's a disease control in his life. Absolutely. For, I don't know how long, but for several years, my dad was an alcoholic. So I get it. I mean, addiction runs in our family. Look at me. You know, I'm addicted to food. I gain, I can't stop eating it and I get fat. And I, you know, I I get it. It's an addiction. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean I have to put up with it. You you know, somebody else's addiction is not my burden. What if you know, if you knew without a shower of doubt, you just knew in your, your mind something told you and he, came to you to get help, like to get put in a home and like, and you knew it was legit. Would you help him? Uh, no, I don't love him enough to pay for it, dude. It's, it's like, that's a lot of money. If, if I'm not yeah. sure he's going to stick with it, he's already been to rehab. Well, sometimes it's, sometimes they do. You could help people without that type. You know, they have rehabs out there that take people in for free, man. You know, if, if it's, you know. yeah, I would help for sure. Yeah, I'm not going to put I mean, money I on the line. when you don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to uh, put money on something that you don't know that's for real. That you don't right. know if it's going to happen. You know, he's, no, he's that, already that makes sense. He's already been to rehab, and it took two months after rehab. He was out talking about raping kids. <laughs> like it, it's yeah. to a point. It's it's like these type of people can't be helped. You know, and I I would love to be wrong. I would love for right. him to get help. I, you know, I don't, I don't want the dude to drop dead at 45 from cirrhosis. You know what I mean? Like th- this alcoholism is something he needs to battle. I got, listen, I got my own battle. I don't want to drop dead of a heart attack at 40. You know what I mean? I got my own battles to face. I don't got time for somebody else's, you know, but I hope he gets it. Yeah. At least. But yeah. when I eat a Big Mac, I don't like call my entire family child abuse, like rapists. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that's the difference. So they had on her side of the family, man, you got you, 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 you on her side of the family, you have Doug. And then on your side of the family, you have your brother. Right. So I mean, those was, two, man, those was, two are taking advantage of it and clashing together, right. working together, may I say. Right. <laughs> it, it, it's fine. You don't work together. It, it's sad that you guys need to use me for views. Like, like you said about Charlie, he can definitely do it without me. The people would watch his stuff, you know, if he took the time to like actually work no, at it's it. It's interesting stuff. It's not, he has potential to work at right. it. You know, he has what it takes, but it takes a lot. Sometimes it takes dedication, it takes work and you can't get drunk all the time doing that, this type of thing. You'll just, you'll just tear it all down once you do that. Exactly. So, that, yeah. So I see the potential in him. When I watch his stuff, I'm like, you know, this is interesting. He could do something with this. But, and people get tired of, I know we're talking about it, but people get tired of seeing the same old thing. Well, see, it's different, from, it's different from you talking about it and, and bringing light onto a situation and somebody else just living in the situation for two years now. Like, 
It, like I feel like yeah, right. if he got sober and he actually took a moment to look at his own history, he would realize Jesus Christ, right? Like I've been obsessing over people that aren't talking about me for two years and it's gotta be a, a little embarrassing. Like sometimes that hits you though. It hits you like that sometimes. Like you'll wake up and you'll be like, what am I doing? You know, you're in the same place. I ain't moved around. I ain't doing nothing. I know I have potential to do a YouTube channel, but, but now I just, uh, focus on this and it's not growing because of that he may need a baby in his life to to do you think that would help him he's got one. Oh, he has a baby he, he doesn't see her but, <laughs> yeah no it didn't help no okay <laughs> some people love their kids and some don't <laughs> right like, i don't i can't imagine a world where you wouldn't uh, honestly but so it, this, uh, i see bridget here saying it's going on three years with both of them so you trade one for the other? Is that how this works? <laughs> yeah. Like when one, when, when you have a problem with one, and then the other one's having a problem, and the other one's like, "What is going on in our life?" That's what they did. Like for for about a year, Doug hated Charlie too. Charlie's a piece of shit. Oh, Doug was there when Charlie hit his own daughter in the face. I was inside. I came out and saw yeah, the tail end of it. Doug was sitting right beside it and did nothing. <laughs> like like. What? Oh man, somebody hit my daughter in the face, buddy. I, uh, I ain't the kind of guy that just talks, and the people that really know me knows that. That ain't but, fine. The the problem is, like, we live in a world now where I have to think, okay, what's going to happen to me if I retaliate to any type of situation now? You know? Oh, you can't. You can't. I mean, you uh, you can't. You have your daughter. Do you have to think about now? Just think when she gets older. When she gets older and she's fourteen, fifteen, and then somebody hits her in the face. What do you? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody getting fucked up. That's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's when you can't. There's, there's points in time in life where you have to cross the line. Right. You have to. And those are the points that you do. You know, somebody mess with my mom, my dad, my brothers, you know, anybody like that. I'm Absolutely. crossing the line. I'm going to jail. But it's just a shame that, uh, you was telling me, you give me a little bit of advice with my YouTube channel, and uh, maybe it's best you never bring anybody on. You just fight and get through it on your own. Right. Because it seems like when you bring people on that they see the fame that's happening with it, and they want half of it or all of it, and then uh, you go along without them, and now they start talking bad about you. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword because on one hand – you kind of need other people, right? Like, like yeah. it can't just be me and Bridget sitting in our house every day. Like this quarantine is, is annoying. And I, I want to entertain more than I can. And at, at some point it's like, you have to have other people. You have to rely on other people, but you got to trust them and you got to make sure they understand. And, and if you work on it together, like dad didn't have an ego, you know, my father, he was, he was, he worked with us, dad, me, dad, he and Bridget. Seem like he did. Yeah. Right. We clawed from Trailwood and man, dad was the type where if fans showed up to his house, he would pull out his camera and he would talk to you for two hours until you had to leave. Like he loved it. And a lot of people, when it's a, say we are, we brought Charlie and Doug onto the channel when we already had over a million subscribers and all of a sudden overnight, Oh, people know who I am. All of a sudden it's because of me. Clearly, like they all say, you know, oh, once I left, the views dropped. I've been getting the same views for six years now. I I always average between 150,000 and 300,000 yeah. views a vlog, always. And I still right. do. And, and it, it's not because of them that I did it. It's because we have worked our asses off to get where we are. And their mind is, oh, it was because of me. And reality is because we worked and they don't get it. Do you think it was easier back then? Uh, it's possible. It is. It's possible. That it's, I don't think I could survive on YouTube starting now. I don't. Yeah. You know, there's so many new rules and changes and angry grandpa couldn't do the videos he was doing in the beginning. Now, like, like we couldn't wow. upload the walking dead prank today and it get 20 million views. <laughs> like, like we can't pull that wow. off now. Why? It's just, well, number one, can't use blood right off the bat. You know, if you use blood, 
Demonetized. Oh, that's Brad. why that video got taken down. I had a video. I did a tiny house, and I was wondering why I even asked, like, what? Why is this uh, taken? Like, I got a warning or whatever. And I'm like, why? I didn't do nothing. I'm just building a tiny house. That's, but I shot a nail through my hand. Accidentally shot the nail through my hand. Yeah, they looked at that and as violent. I, definitely. That was definitely why. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, was an accident, though. <laughs> You you, you should have just cut it, you know. <laughs> like I didn't know that before. We did a video where Grandpa pretended to cut his own finger off with a chainsaw, and we could do that there. But you can't even accidentally, you know, hit yourself with a, a nail now. So the landscape has changed so much that, like, the people that are getting famous now, number one, they're getting more famous because it's harder, and number two, they they have to dramatically change what they do, like so. We're still adapting. Like that that's why we're able to do this for as long as we have is because you have to constantly adapt what you're doing to what people are watching. Yeah. And I always wanted to know, because I you know, I've been knowing you for a little while now. And uh is there any time and point you want to say, you know, let's just go on a vacation, Bridget, and let's not do anything for a week? I've thought about it. <laughs> like here's the thing. Here the, the, again, this is about YouTube now. They have changed it to where the algorithm will spit you out if you're gone for like a week. So like I has data for my channel that says, oh, he uploaded every day and got this many views a day. But these next seven days, he got half the views, which means people are done watching them. And all of a sudden, they stop recommending my videos because they think half of my audience dropped. And, and so you, you can't stay yeah. away for too, too many days. It's wow, it, that's it, terrible, man. It's why, like, you used to ask me on DMs, "Hey, would you ever do Survivor?" And I always, I always said, "I can't afford it. <laughs> I can't afford to do Survivor." Okay, so is there any way you can help me with this internet problem? Are you, are you having what do I need to do? I'm not really sure, man. Are you are you hardwired? It's, it's buffering on me. I'm like, is there anything that? Yeah, I mean, we have sudden link. So are you got the Ethernet plugged in? Or are you yeah, using the internet Wi-Fi? plugged in. I mean, are you using Wi-Fi or hardwire? I'm using Wi-Fi. I'm using I'm using Wi-Fi. Try the try next time. Just try plugging the wire right into the computer. Oh, okay. Got like, the Mac, so I don't know where that, where in the world this, we plug it in. This wire. <laughs> yeah. Try plugging that. Which one? The, the the uh the big white one there? Uh this one. Oh the, e the Ethernet. Oh, okay. I mean, that, that'll, that'll give you that. a, that'll give you a direct connection. Yep, that's what I'm doing now. Now yeah, man. Yeah, I'm about to go after this. I'm going to the thing. But but anyway, so yeah, it's uh it's crazy. Was your was Angry Grandpa a fan of the show, Survivor? Yes. Uh he didn't watch all the seasons. Like I, I've seen there's not a season I've missed. I, I the thing is, me and dad watched the very first season of Survivor together in 2000. I, I was a kid and we would go to his room. He had this nice TV in the room and we would just lay there with snacks and watch Survivor every week. And, you know, oh, he cool. was, a, he, he was a huge Richard Hatch fan. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, everybody remembers any Survivor fan remembers where they were when, when Sue did that, you know, snakes and rats, <laughs> you know, speech yeah. Yeah. to Kelly. And we were hooked instantly. And, and at some point he stopped watching, but I never stopped. Like, you know, me and Bridget, Bridget had, actually, Bridget stopped watching after you stopped coming onto the show because it, it's to the point where it's like we consider you to be like the best that ever played. Like you, you just had like a game every time you played that was different than that. Like, like when you trick Tyson into like voting yeah. for poverty and he goes home, <laughs> right? Like those kind of plays, you don't see people pulling off anymore, right? Like. They're, they're not smart enough, I feel like. And so Bridget yeah. was like, if Russell's not playing, I'm not watching this season. <laughs> and so 
every time they announce like one of these cast reunion seasons, we're like, oh, please, like let Russell be on it this season, you know? And and, and you never are, and right. it's ridiculous. It's stupid. Of course, I don't think yeah, you'll make well. it that far because they, you know, people don't. They know how good you are yeah. now, so they get rid of you right away, dude. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be a big target when I go on the show. Do you they, know if? Uh, <laughs> do you know if her, if Bridget, her other side of the family, watches it, or if Charlie watches it? I don't think Charlie watches it, man. <laughs> you know, I, I, think, I think the yeah. only thing he watches is the bottom of his Jack Daniels. <laughs> like, I, I think that's about <laughs> it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you, you used to DM me and say, you know, hey, why don't you do Survivor? And I've always wanted to. You know, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, that, I, that was my next question. Would you play Survivor? I, I can't afford it. <laughs> like, oh yeah, I, I you're right. I can't afford to be away from YouTube for 39 days. You know, part of me has always thought like, if I had like a game that I could, I would try like being on there for dietary reasons. <laughs> you know, like oh, I'm just here to lose weight. Yeah. <laughs> you know, All right. Just to put out a book after the season that I call the Survivor Diet, right? <laughs> so I, I yeah, lose a bunch yeah. of weight. I put out a book about losing weight on Survivor, right? That that would have been my plan. Yeah, the, uh, the Survivor thing is real, man. I lost sixty pounds out there, and you know I wasn't I was big, but I wasn't really really big, and it, sixty pounds crazy, in thirty nine days. You notice it, and, and not to be one of these people. It's like you go from what you were to like being like a sex symbol by, by the end of the second season you were on, you know, like this is the same dude. You know, right. What happened, right. What happened here? right. Right. The production. Yeah. Production used to tell me, man, you don't even look like you're related to that guy. Right. I was like, Dang. Oh, Bridget just texted me. Apparently my voice got deep. So, <laughs> yeah. it, it did. I was like, Whoa, man, you got, you got the love doctor voice now. The, the Illuminati came to me and they were like, hey, deep ba put some bass in your voice. <laughs> I had a guy DM me yesterday. Was that you? <laughs> so, so, yeah. She's like, your voice guy. I know that she wants to do things, too. Every girlfriend wants to uh, go to Fiji and go on a cruise and do this and that. I mean, you can actually do that and still upload your stuff on the boat if you went on a cruise or something. That That's the sticking point right now. We have this big trip to New York planned right now. We were going to be leaving tomorrow. And coronavirus, you know, we can't go anywhere now. Oh, man. I mean, yeah. I had the whole Besides, list on my with this phone. one on, I'm talking about ordinary. Yeah, yeah. We. She never wants to do anything. She she She's kind of like me. We're just kind of like homebodies. But occasionally, I want to just go somewhere. And Deb, but like she's oh, like, oh, so you're the one that wants to go, right? I, I want to go places. I want I want to yeah. see the world, you know, and as much of it that I can yeah. see. I want to go to Easter Island, you know, and you know, just have fun. Yeah. I would do Survivor. I what, I feel like I don't know if I would do well, you know, but I would like to try it. Right. Yeah, that's like me. What I want to do is I'm getting a a, a bus together to travel and going from. Uh, reality stars to YouTube stars and sit there on the bus and then also see different things uh, in the world like the interesting like uh, the Amityville Horror House I want to go check that out stuff like yeah. that yeah the interesting thing is that was what dad wanted to do that was dad's like big life plan was to get a big RV and to just take a camera and go record the oddities of the United States and just Visit yeah. fans and travel. That was what he always wanted to do, but he just got sick. When he got sick, it went so fast. Like nobody expected yeah. it. When he got sick, because I was following that too. And when he got sick, how long was it from the time he knew it to the time he passed? Uh July to December. Wow. Yeah, like you know, July, we, we were at my fourth of July party. And dad showed up. He drove up in the 55. We had all our family there. He was really happy. And then while we're at the party, he like almost passes out. We're like, Jesus, dad, are you okay? You know, this was like literally like a day or two days after Charlie had his drug flip out, hit Bridget in the face. So we were just trying to take our minds off all the horrors. 
And so we got the family together and he passes out and he goes to the hospital. I'm like, I'm like, he was, he was dating a girl named Lauren at the time. I was like, listen, take one to the hospital, find out what's going on. And then the next day they're like, yeah, he's got cirrhosis of the liver. And that was, um, that was July 5th or 6th that we found out. And he passed away December the 10th. It was well, aggressive. I have, a buddy, I have a buddy that they just diagnosed him with that, but they told him that it, it is possible that it gets better. I don't know. Yeah. It, yeah. I, uh, I was talking to the doctors. I was like, Hey, you know, check my blood, see if my liver is good. I'll give him as much as he needs, you know, but they, they said he wouldn't survive the surgery. So that, that wasn't even an option. So, so y'all couldn't even, couldn't even yeah. try it. Couldn't even. They would, oh, they, they wouldn't even allow us to get tested. They were like, listen, he's not eligible for the surgery. I was like, look, we got the money. I'll pay cash for the surgery. You know what I mean? I have money. I'll pay cash. I want to, I want the treatment. And they said, listen, you don't, he doesn't qualify. He's not going to survive the surgery. And I was kind of pissed. I was, you know, I was like, what do you like? How about you give us that option? But they were probably right in the end. You know, it, yeah. it just happened so fast. It was, uh, to me, it seemed like you guys were best friends. Absolutely. To me, it seemed like that. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know. D uh, Doug yeah. down here wants to get invited to the uh, panel. Uh, I don't. I'm nothing. I have nothing to say to that guy, man. You know, he likes to talk about like we're afraid to talk. We went to his house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you had nothing to say in our faces except lies. I I'm done with this guy. If it's even him. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah, in I terms of. In terms of best friends, man, like I think as far back as I can remember, me and dad were like inseparable. You know, I was like his shadow. I went everywhere with him. He, he would sell in the flea markets on the weekends. I would go with him. We were always trying to figure out something to do to, to make a buck. And this was something we were good at. And we did it together. And yeah, it's not really Doug. I, I wouldn't think it was anyway. You know, Doug right now actually had his live streaming revoked from YouTube just like yanked it from him. I don't know how that happened. I didn't say anything. Yeah. Yeah. He, how, uh, why would they do that? Just I, I'm not really sure. I think, you know, they're, they've changed the policy where if you're doing what he's doing, then they're going to like, they're, they're cracking down on uh user on user harassment. Yeah. So you can do interviews though. Right. But see, you can the, do in, it, yeah. Absolutely. There's a difference between like interviewing somebody about a situation and going live every day and talking about, <laughs> you know, they, they know yeah. the difference now. All right. All right, man. Well, uh, I don't want to keep you too long, but like I said, uh, I was a big fan of angry grandpa. So it's funny that he watched this, you know, watched the show too. I mean, he, I he watched was, the season you were on, man. So he definitely saw you. Right? Yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, I appreciate the uh, what he's done for YouTube because what he's done for YouTube, uh, he is the godfather of YouTube. Like he has created things where people imitate all the time. Absolutely, and they the would never. Job. Right. Yeah, you never will be able to create create uh, angry rapper. I've seen some clips of Duck Candle to. There we go. <laughs> Hello? Hey, I can hear you now, man. Oh, yeah, this thing, man. I'm going to have to try what you said and put plug it directly into my computer or something. But, yeah, there's uh, I've seen some clips of you and Doug, and there's nothing that comes close. To right. you and angry rapper, they, and it never will be. It is that is done, and it's done forever. Uh, it's sad that it's done. My son was a big fan as well, and he was sad to he, to hear him go, but he's in a better place now. So, hopefully, that's everybody can move on from it. But it doesn't seem like that's not going to happen. Ah, uh, yeah, man. It's it's but anyway, man. 
I appreciate you coming up. Yeah. Yeah, it's an unfortunate yeah. situation, but it is what it is, you know. I just got to do stuff for me and, and my daughter and Bridget, yeah. you know. All right, man. Well, you stay strong and uh, don't let all that get to you too bad and go on a vacation somewhere. Any, right. Anybody that's true fans, any real fans, if you're a real fan, you want, you don't mind. Uh, let this guy go on vacation, you know, <laughs> take a few weeks off, man. You know, that's how I am with the people that I, that I follow. I'm like, Hey, go take a few weeks off, take a week off and have a good time. And go see the beach and go see something. You know? Maybe maybe once this coronavirus is gone in like twenty years, we can leave the house again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> Jeez. All right, man. Well, I sure appreciate you coming on. Very interesting stuff. I had a few questions, got them, and uh, like I said, you you know, you stay strong and don't let all that get to you, man. Hey, have me back on again, man. I liked it. All right, man. We'll we'll talk about Survivor next time. Yeah, yeah, man. I'm obsessed. I'm, I'm one of those super fans, man. So. <laughs> are you just as sub obsessed with survivor uh, or, or, as you are wrestling yeah yeah man i, <laughs> yeah. I I've, ne I've never missed a season there isn't one season i haven't seen except for like maybe the foreign survivors but all the american survivors i have never missed one right yeah like like I, right, even, man. I even know like when 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 jeff like changes like reading the final like how it used to be better when he would, it actually transitioned well when he would come with the, the voting urn, you know, and transition to live from like, like it used to look better than it does. Right. Now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I pay, I watch too much survivor, man. All right. No, that's a good thing. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on and you have a good day, brother. I mean, you too, man. Next time I'm going to get better in that. All right, guys. That was an interview with Michael Green. I don't know if you all know him. He is, I know most of you probably do know him. He is from Angry Grandpa, a uh, kid behind the camera. A very interesting uh, videos he has. So, I'd like to talk to Doug. That would be interesting to see, you know, why he d does the things he does. But I don't think that's him in the house. They seem like, I've always thought that they should take a little vacation. You know, they do seem like good people. They need to, uh, go somewhere and get all that off their mind. Just think if it was you sitting there with so many um, issues with the family issues and you can't, you know, it's constantly weighing in on your mind. You can't really do anything. You need to, it's healthy to get out and go do something. I was going to donate uh, Doug 50 bucks if he can explain why. He would say he doesn't need the money. I don't think he's on here. I'm just waiting to see here before I get off. And I'd like to see what he has to say. All right, guys. Appreciate you watching. And uh, that's it. That's all I got interesting conversation i know this isn't about survivor but this won't always be about survivor i'm i you know that's yes that's what i talk about at first but uh we will be talking all types of i like to get shane dawson on a few of the other big uh, youtubers just have a little talk that's all all right guys appreciate it later